Hello out there in piano world, this is Mark Harian, and I thought, for all of you who have been so interested in the Kauai MP11, for good reason, because I'm presuming that it's awesome, I've decided to do a quick and dirty little unboxing video of my new arrival. So let's get to work. So it arrived in about a week from Kraft Music. No problems in the shipping, I hope. Came on a local freight carrier. Mocha is very interested in our handiwork here. I had the opportunity to play a CA95 and CA65 at a local dealership, but naturally there aren't really any dealers local to Seattle that are carrying the MP11 or pretty much anywhere. So I assumed that this was kind of like a portable CA95 um, in most respects, and that's kind of what I liked. It's just, I'm not a really big fan of cabinet digital pianos. Um, so I'm more of a stage piano guy. <clears throat> so, okay, well, looks like it is at least in one piece. And I want to apologize for my messy office and studio. Had to move a lot of stuff out of the way in a hurry. <clears throat> so let's see what we've got. Okay, first of all, what's in this box here? Music stand, it appears to be. Don't really have a use for that, considering I can't read music, so we'll put that aside for now. Yeah, I could put lead, put lead sheets on there and pretend I'm on stage, even though I don't perform. <sighs> Bravo. Really long power cord. Um, and owner's manual, all in English, which is good, because I'd think that if the manual was this thin and only in three languages, that would be kind of a problem. And the warranty. So put that aside for now, too. And I'm assuming this is going to be the <coughs> triple pedal unit. Damn it. Triple pedal unit? Yep. Wow. Yep. Not something you see every day with a stage piano. One of those pedals make the keys jump to the left slightly. Oh, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> Una, Una Corda actually making the keys move on a digital piano. You watch, he'll do it in a couple of years. <laughs> wow. They were just too cool for one plug. Nice. So nice, uh, really heavy construction on this pedal unit, but these this cable feels really kind of fragile. So I would probably advise. I mean, these these leads don't exactly inspire confidence. So if you're performing with this thing, I imagine this thing will be covered in electrical tape before too long. But that's just me being a pessimist, probably. Put this over here for a sec. All right. Like this is actually a review of the cushion top polystyrene packing material. All right. Yeah, it's gonna have to come around the other way. So. Uh, you can take the this end here; it'll be easier. But let's let's get the uh, foam off. And actually, unveil this thing. Wow, what a beast. It's so shiny. Ivory Touch Grand Feel. Oh, it's all taped down. Okay, well. <laughs> we'll test the action when we actually get it on the stand. Alrighty. Um, hope this has got enough leverage for this. Um... Okay, so go ahead and just kind of see if you can get your hand under here, which is easier said than, oh yeah, there's a, there's a kind of, there's a lip here. So go ahead and pull this off. Okay. Oh my 
lord. This is the heaviest stage piano I've ever seen. It's cool. All right, just set it down. Shiny. All right. Hopefully the action isn't all screwed up. I know that a lot of you had some unfortunate travails when it came to this grand seal action, but it seems like Kawhi is doing good by their customers. Hello, Kawhi James. Thank you for the good wishes. All right. All right. This one's for you, Lulatu. Okay, at least they're not coming apart. At least not that I can tell. So we will be back after the jump with speakers and an amp hooked up and Google Glass has an extremely poor mic. So you're not gonna really be able to tell anything about the sound, but I will give you my first impressions. See you in a second. Okay, so we're back. Provided we hooked up everything up correctly, we should be hearing some music in a second. I'm going to do the first power on. We'll see if I actually did it correctly. So, let's see, the volume's up all the way, which should not be. I have only the finest audiophile gear here, a left high amp that I picked up on eBay for $15 and some bookshelf speakers that reviewed fairly nicely. You know, just wanted something quick to monitor myself and then, uh, you know, we'll get to the actual recording sometime later. All right, so here goes. Power on. It's a momentary switch. I did not expect that. Okay. Let's see if we actually have sound. We do not. Back in just a second. Okay, folks, so it turns out it is a simple matter of each zone having its own level control. So I turned up the master volume, piano volume was all the way down. So let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so the sustain pedal is being held down uh, permanently. It's not actually, I don't think I have it plugged in correctly. Let's see if I have, this is the first time I've ever used, you know, a pedal unit that was not, uh, you know, just your standard digital piano pedal. That actually makes more sense to plug these guys in the way around. Okay, let's see if this works. There we go. So it works, and my initial impressions at this point are that um, the action feels very similar to, but a little bit lighter than the CA95, which is weird because I know they're supposed to be exactly the same. Uh, maybe it's just how this, uh, maybe it's just how this one rolls and how it's adjusted. So um, things seem fairly smooth. Let's try it out here. <clears throat>
got a nice, nice bass hand. chance to play with the uh, virtual technician I did in the store on the CA 95 and I was super impressed in how much I could tweak it um, so it's gonna take me a little bit to kind of find my answer sound uh, let's have a look at the menu here uh, if you can see it I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> shield it here um, so well that's really cool so basically every it has it up here uh, as a heads-up display where you oh, sorry uh, not a heads-up display, but it has it. Uh, each each knob controls what looks to be uh, four different values in each corner, and depending on what you have selected in the menu, those knobs will control you know various features. Like for instance, here on the concert grand, you can see it says hammer delay, string resonance, fallback noise, stretch uh, tuning. You turn this knob, then it goes to wide one, wide two, narrow. And then you can hit piano again. You get damper resonance, stereo width, brilliance, um, <clears throat> touch. I want to go to heavy because the touch actually seems lighter than it did in the store, and it's a lot lighter than my Steinway downstairs. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, let's see here. Let's see what kind of noise the damper makes. It's so quiet. You can barely hear it. Let's crank that up. Now you can kind of hear it a lot more. Okay. Back down to five. Touch heavy. Let's see what that does. a lot better heavy is a lot better sorry for the jerky video um fall back noise i noticed that hammer delay was really something that was helpful so let's crank that up a little bit and see what happens See, if I were doing like a music store review, it'd be like, hi, I'm Mark Hurian, and this is the new Kawaii MP11. We're going to be playing some tinkly, bland blues riffs with no reverb or effects whatsoever, so you have no idea how it sounds. But in this case, I'm going to try to actually get some effects on here to give a rough idea of... Okay, so reverb is on. And what happens when you turn that off? Does the menu change at all? No. If you hit EFX, we got EFX. Okay, so, all right, that's kind of cool. So you can change the different uh, values of each 
section, the piano, e piano, or sub, I can't remember what that stands for, but it's just other, you know, other sounds, strings, pad, harpsichord, mallet, and bass. Okay, we're back. And the glass is starting to overheat, so I'm going to give my final impressions and say that, first of all, to get to the reverb, uh, there's several ways to do it, but the easiest way is just to go edit while you're in the sound, and you've got this menu. So you can go reverb, EFX, sound, tuning, key setup, control, knob assignment, and virtual technician. So I'll go to the reverb, and I've got it set up as um, type, concert hall, pre-delay, 1.6 milliseconds. Really, really nice, you know, echoey reverb. And it's especially, you know, this this is this mellow grand sound with the high reverb. It's really great. It just it's it's going to be really great for doing film work. So this, you know, it's obviously got a really different sound. I'm not, you know, I'm not very familiar with Kawhi. This is kind of my first foray into exploring their offerings. But it sounds what what you kind of get from what I've listened to is that you've got basically the closest thing you can electronically to having a Shigeto Kawai in your house uh, without the $70,000 price tag. So, um, so far my impressions are just really great. Uh, I do want to say <clears throat> that the pedals down here are really not, they're, they're kind of flimsy, honestly. They don't have the same kind of oomph to them that like the pedal from my SV-1 had from Korg. Um, they seem really kind of uh, like they don't require as much downward force as you'd expect for something that's basically emulating a grand piano. Um, so I might end up just, you know, using a, a separate damper pedal just because it's, uh, I, I kind of like the feel of something a little bit more beefy, especially after playing the Steinway for six months. I, mean, I haven't played a digital in six months because I got the Steinway. And I have to say that as far as digital pianos go, this is the closest to the real deal I've ever laid my hands on. This is just by far the most natural feeling keyboard I've ever played. Um, the adjustments basically will make it playable for pretty much anyone, I'd say. Um, the sound is going to take something to get used to. It's obviously not a Steinway sound. It's not, you know, it's it's a very, you know, I guess it's a very Kawhi sound. It's it's kind of it's kind of bright. It's kind of uh, um, a little more brilliant, uh, even in the, on the this, the mellow piano. So. But again, that can be adjusted. I mean, there's just a million ways you can customize this to, uh, for your own. And um, yeah, so that's my preliminary unboxing and quick impressions of the Kawai MP11. Uh, I want to shout out to everyone on Piano World for their uh, ongoing support with the uh, issues I've been having with my Steinway and, uh, and just providing so many valuable resources for uh, you know, prospective piano buyer and uh, gearheads alike. And um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun with this. Thanks for watching.